Good morning, good evening, good whatever time you're watching this at. Welcome to yet another Pipe Dream speed run. This week's episode is going to be very nitty gritty into code because there's a brand new Node.js feature within Code Steps called Rerun. Rerun allows you to rerun a step over and over again in your workflow without ending the workflow's execution or moving on to the next step. This is super neat and it allows us to do some pretty cool things with APIs that have these long running jobs that kick off. They're not synchronous to your API call that you make initially. A perfect example of this is the Shopify bulk operations API. The bulk operations API allows you to define queries that can produce hundreds of thousands, if not millions of records. Shopify will perform this query in the background, and then you just ask Shopify over and over again, hey, are you done yet? Hey, are you done yet? Hey, are you done yet? And then finally Shopify is like, yeah, here you go. Here's the JSON blob. You can use it now. So we're gonna use retry to interact with that API and pull in all the products from a Shopify store. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna make a brand new workflow. And then I'm not even gonna bother adding a trigger. We don't need a trigger for this example. I'm gonna just add a Node.js code step and start with some empty scaffolding. Now I'm gonna copy and paste some code that I've written before just to save you on time. The first thing we're gonna do is import the Shopify node library. It's not the official library, but I prefer this one. It's just easier to use. And then we'll just paste in a bit of code. All it's doing is instantiating a new Shopify instance that represents access to my Pierce's Pretzels demo shop with its Shopify API key. All right, now that we have set that set, we can define our dot, re, our dot flow dot rerun function. This takes three arguments. The first is the delay, right? The delay tells it how long to wait before it retries again. The next argument is the context. And in this case, we're not going to actually use it. It's a way for you to pass context so it, it changes between runs. Um, we won't need it in this case, but it's pretty interesting. And then last, we'll add a max retries, which defines how many tries it's allowed to attempt before it says, okay, failed, did this operation didn't complete in time. The default is 10. I'm just gonna define these real quick. I'm just gonna say the delay is going to be five seconds. And these arguments are in milliseconds, so I'll just do 1,000 times five. And then the context, we don't need it. Like I said, I'll just set it to null. And then I'll set the max retries to uh, also five. Great. So now we've told the function to rerun five times. We also need to define our bulk operation API call. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste this. This is a GraphQL mutation. It's a API call that defines an action to be performed on the remote GraphQL server, aka Shopify's API. You can see that it's creating a bulk operation run query, and we define the query, which is also a GraphQL query, so it's a query inside of a query, and we're asking for all the products and their IDs and titles. The second part of the query is what's returned synchronously to us, which is the bulk operation that we just created, its ID and status, as well as any user errors, if there are any. And you can see on line 42 that we actually call Shopify with this query and it initiates the creation of the bulk, bulk operation. All right, so the next step is to ask Shopify, hey, is this bulk operation done yet? Can I download these files? We do that with another GraphQL request. This one we'll call it a poll query because we're polling or asking Shopify for this data. And all it's asking is, hey, for this current bulk operation, give me this data. And the one attribute we care about the most is the status. So we're going to call Shopify once again, and we can exit out this step when we know that the bulk operation is completed. So from that API response, we'll check the current bulk operation and look at the status and see if it's completed. If it is, great, We've, we, we did it. We'll return the results and we can exit this step finally. Now there's one issue. We defined the rerun here at the very top of the step. So it's going to execute everything below this whole step multiple times, five times. So it'll actually initiate the bulk operation five times and pull it five times. 
That's not what we want. We need a way for this step to operate differently depending on which rerun number it's currently on. So the first run, it should be creating the mutation and the subsequent runs until it hits that max retries, it should be pulling the API asking for results. We can do that with context. So we can access the context of the step with a special dollar sign context variable. And I'm going to extract out the run information. The run information tells us about the current invocation or run of the workflow. And we can say, well, if this is the first time, if run.runs is one, then let's create this mutation. Actually, while we're at it, let's actually make sure that we don't call rerun every single re every single rerun. So we'll put in here as we'll put this call in here as well. I'll put it below the, the uh, query actually, make it even easier to read. So I'll say console.log up here, polling or creating the bulk operation. That's what we're doing. And then we'll go down here and this actually performs the query right down here. And we'll put in the, the flow.rerun. I actually made a small mistake. I should be putting this up here. This actually performs the query to the Shopify API and I can close this conditional out. So on the first run, it will only perform the bulk operation query and any other run, we're going to actually ask Shopify is this done yet? So console.log polling the Shopify bulk operation status. So anything below this line will be only conditional on runs after the first run. Make sure this all looks good. Great. So I'm going to test it and we'll look at the results. Perfect. So it created the bulk operation, but you're not seeing any console logs about checking the status or pulling the status because in testing, flow.rerun doesn't actually rerun. We need to deploy this workflow. So I'm going to deploy it, and then I'm going to click run now because there's no trigger. It's just running manually. So run it now to trigger that, and we can see the results in real time here where it's creating the bulk operation, and then it should wait five seconds. And now it's pulling the bulk operation status, and it looks like the status is completed on the second run. We should be able to look at the log exports, step exports, and here we could see the URL that Shopify told us where this product data is. So we can copy this URL and the next code step, actually retrieve the results and look at them. It's a special JSON-L file, line by line JSON. It's very nifty. So you can leverage this workflow to make very, very complicated GraphQL queries to Shopify and then pull Shopify until that data is ready. This has a number of benefits. There is a webhook system that Shopify gives you, but you can only define one URL. So one URL has to handle all different types of queries, whereas with the polling, you can make different types of bulk operation operations and respond to them differently without relying on one webhook to rule them all. I hope you enjoyed this week's speed run. It was a bit of a longer one, it's a bit more code, but it's a really powerful feature. It allows you to do really neat things like use URL callbacks and also paginate an API. Read more in our docs below. Have a great day.